Welcome back. We are continuing our discussion about the digestive system. The pharynx allows the passage of food, fluids, and air. Food moves from the mouth into the oropharynx and then the laryngopharynx. The pharynx is made up of stratified squamous epithelium lining with mucus producing glands interspersed. The external muscle layers consist of two skeletal muscles. The inner layer of muscles runs longitudinally, whereas the outer pharyngeal constrictors encircle the wall of the pharynx. <clears throat> the esophagus is a flat, muscular tube that runs from the laryngopharynx to the stomach. It is collapsed when not involved in food propulsion. It pierces the diaphragm at the esophageal hiatus and joins the stomach at the cardial orifice. The gastroesophageal, or cardiac sphincter, surrounds the cardial orifice to keep the orifice closed when food is not being swallowed. Mucus cells on both sides of the sphincter help protect the esophagus from acid reflux. The esophagus has all four elementary canal layers. The esophageal mucosa contains stratified squamous epithelium, which changes to simple columnar at the stomach. It also has esophageal glands in the submucosa, which secrete mucus to aid in bolus movement. The muscularis externa is skeletal muscle superiorly, mixed in the middle, and smooth muscle inferiorly. The esophagus also has an adventitia, the fibrous connective tissue, or um, the fibrous connective tissue instead of the serosa. Here we see a cross section of the esophagus. The lumen is collapsed, the mucosa is stratified squamous, the submucosa is areolar connective tissue, and it has both circular and longitudinal layers of muscularis externa. The adventitia is the outermost fibrous connective tissue. Microscopically, we can see the stratified squamous of the esophagus ending and the simple columnar epithelium of the stomach beginning on this slide. Heartburn is caused by stomach acid regurgitating into the esophagus. Heartburn is the first symptom of GERD, or gastroesophageal reflux disease. Heartburn can be caused by excess food or drink, extreme obesity, pregnancy, or running. Heartburn can also be caused by a hiatal hornea, which is a structural abnormality where part of the esophagus, I'm sorry, part of the stomach protrudes above the diaphragm. A hiatal hernia can also lead to esophagitis, esophageal ulcer, or even esophageal cancer. Digestion begins in the mouth. The pharynx and esophagus are conduits to pass food from the mouth to the stomach. The major function of both the esophagus and pharynx is propulsion that starts with deglutition or swallowing. Deglutition involves the coordination of 22 muscles groups and two phases. The buccal phase, which is the voluntary contraction of the tongue, and the pharyngeal esophageal phase, which is the involuntary phase that primarily involves the vagus nerve. The pharyngeal esophageal phase is controlled by the swallowing center in the medulla and the lower pons. Deglutition begins with the buccal phase, where the upper esophageal sphincter is closed or contracted. The tongue presses against the hard palate, palate, forcing the food bolus into the oropharynx. The pharyngeal esophageal phase begins when the tongue blocks the mouth. The soft palate and its uvula rise, closing off the nasopharynx. The larynx rises so the epiglottis cl closes the trachea. The upper esophageal sphincter relaxes and food enters the esophagus. The constrictor muscles of the pharynx contract, forcing food into the esophagus inferiorly. The upper esophageal sphincter contracts after the food enters. Peristalsis moves food through the esophagus to the stomach. The circular and longitudinal muscles contract appropriately to cause peristalsis. The esophageal sphincter surrounding the cardial orifice opens. After food enters the stomach, the sphincter closes, preventing regurgitation. 
The stomach is a temporary storage tank that starts the chemical breakdown of protein digestion. The stomach converts the bolus of food into a paste-like chyme. The empty stomach is about 50 milliliters of volume, but can expand to 40 liter, or I'm sorry, 4 liters. When empty, the stomach mucosa has many folds called rugae, or rugae. The major regions of the stomach include the cardial part, or the cardia, <clears throat> starting up here, excuse me, which surrounds the cardial orifice. The fundus is the dome-shaped region beneath the diaphragm. The body is the mid portion. The pyloric part begins with the wider and more superior portion called the antrum. The antrum narrows into the pyloric canal and terminates at the pylorus. The pylorus is continuous with the duodenum through the pyloric valve, the sphincter controlling the stomach emptying. Also notice where the lesser, which is right here, curvature is, as well as the greater curvature. Here's a cadaver stomach. You can see the fundus up here, the body here, the greater curvature coming down to the pylorus. The greater curvature is the convex lateral surface of the stomach. The lesser curvature is the concave medial surface of the stomach. Mesenteries extend from both curvatures and tether the stomach to other digestive organs. The lesser omentum runs from the lesser curvature to the liver. The greater omentum drapes inferiorly from the greater curvature over the intestine, spleen, and transverse colon. It blends with the mesocolon, the mesentery that anchors the large intestine to the abdominal wall. The greater omentum contains fat deposits and lymph nodes. The autonomic nervous system supplies the stomach. Sympathetic fibers from the thoracic splanchnic nerves are relayed through the celiac plexuses, or the celiac plexus. Parasympathetic fibers are supplied by the vagus nerve. The blood supply to the stomach comes from the gastric and splenic branches of the celiac trunk, and the veins are those of the hepatic portal system. The stomach wall contains the regular four tunics, but the muscularis and the mucosa are modified. The muscularis externa has circular and longitudinal smooth muscle layers, but in the stomach it also has an extra third layer. The inner oblique layer allows the stomach not only to churn, mix, and move the chyme, but also to pummel it, which increases physical breakdown. The mucosa layer is also modified. It consists of simple columnar epithelium entirely composed of mucus cells. They secrete a two-layer coat of alkaline mucus. The surface layer traps bicarbonate-rich fluid layer that is beneath it. The mucosa is dotted with gastric pits, which lead into gastric glands, which then produce the gastric juices. Figure 21.16a shows the microscopic anatomy of the stomach. The thick mucosa is simple columnar epithelium. So this whole layer here is the mucosa. It is dotted with gastric pits, which lead to the gastric juice secreting um, gastric glands. So gastric pits, gastric glands. There is then the submucosa layer, followed by the three layers of muscularis externa, and then the serosa. The glands in the fundus and the body of the stomach produce most of the gastric juice. The glands include secretory cells called mucous neck cells, parietal cells, chief cells, and enteroendocrine cells. This is a diagram of gastric pits and gastric glands. See how the gastric pit is just the beginning of the gastric gland. Mucous neck cells are followed by parietal cells. So if we look here, mucous neck cells are followed by the parietal cells, which are interspersed, and finally the chief cells. And lastly, there's an enteroendocrine gland, a few of those at the end as well of the gastric pit. Mucous neck cells secrete 
a thin acidic mucus of unknown function. The parietal cells secrete hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. Hydrochloric acid has a pH of 1.5 to 3.5 and denatures protein. It activates pepsins and breaks down plant cells' walls, and it can kill many bacteria. Intrinsic factor is a glycoprotein required for the absorption of vitamin B12 in the small intestine. Chief cells secrete pepsinogen and lipases. Pepsinogen is an inactive enzyme that is activated to pepsin in the presence of hydrochloric acid and by pepsin itself by way of a positive feedback mechanism. Lipases digest 15% of all lipids. Enteroendocrine cells secrete chemical messengers into the lamina propria. Some of their secretions, like serotonin and histamine, act locally as paracrines. Other secretions, like somatostatin, act as both a paracrine and as a hormone, which act on digestive organs. Gastrin is a hormone that regulates stomach secretion and motility. This figure shows the close proximity of the hydrochloric acid secreting parietal cells, seen in blue, and the pepsinogen secreting chief cells, shown in purple. The hydrochloric acid activates the pepsinogen into pepsin. The harsh digestive conditions require the stomach to be protected, so it has a mucosal barrier created by three factors. The mucosal barrier is from a thick layer of bicarbonate-rich mucus, tight junctions between epithelial cells to prevent the juice from seeping under to the underneath tissue, and damaged epithelial cells are quickly replaced by the division of the stem cells. Surface cells are replaced every three to six days. So these three factors protect the stomach and create, uh, by creating this mucosal barrier. Gastritis is the inflammation of the stomach caused by anything that breaches the stomach's mucosal barrier. Peptic or gastric ulcers can erode the stomach wall, which can perforate the stomach wall, which can lead to peritonitis and hemorrhage. Most ulcers are caused by the bacterium Helicobacter pylori. Other causes include NSAIDs like aspirin. This is a picture of a gastric ulcer. And this is a picture of the bacterium Helicobacter pylori, which is a major cause of stomach ulcers. The digestive processes that the stomach carries out are as follows. It carries out the breakdown of food, it serves as a holding area for food, it delivers chyme to the small intestine, it denatures protein by hydrochloric acid, and pepsin carries out the enzymatic digestion of proteins. In infants, renin breaks down milk, resulting in a curdy substance. The stomach also absorbs lipid-soluble alcohol and aspirin and secretes intrinsic factor. The secretion of intrinsic factor is the only essential function of the stomach because vitamin B12 cannot be absorbed without its presence. B12 is needed for red blood cells to mature. The lack of intrinsic factor causes pernicious anemia and can be treated by B12 injections. <clears throat> I'm going to stop here and we'll catch up um, on part two.